before we start, um, uh, oh, can't tell you. So we've got a whole new sound system tonight, and hopefully we all can hear it. Well, so, but we can't touch our microphone, so um, <laughs> we just have to be less fidgety. Uh, okay. Um, welcome to of the, the gallery. Before I start the meeting, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and the uh, um, Before I start the meeting, I'll just explain how the meeting um, happens, just for those people who are new to um, planning committee meetings. Um, what we do is uh, each planning application that we, um, um, that, that we hear tonight, we'll be um, asking both the objectors and the applicants to um, put their case forward uh, for five minutes. They can make a, a verbal and uh, an opportunity for questions. Councils will be able to ask questions of our officers in order to seek some clarifications in relation to what's in the um, um, what's in the planning reports or some of the issues that have come forward as a result of the presentations. After that. Um, after we've heard both of the presentations, then the councillors will debate the issue and then actually vote on the planning application to either allow it or, or disallow it. So that's the that's the process that we'll be going through, and I'll be taking you through that as we as, as we deal with each each application. Okay, and we have a, a couple of apologies tonight. As you can see, there are a few empty chairs. Uh, Tim Lawrence, um, Councillor Tim Lawrence, is on leave of, of absence. Uh, Mayor is an um, um, for tonight's meeting, um, she's um, taken some annual leave with her family, and also we have a late apology by um, Lena Messina, who is also um, not here tonight. Okay, councillors, we'll move on to disclosures of conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest in relation to the agenda tonight? No, sure. no? okay, thank you for that. Okay, so confirmation of, um, of the minutes of the previous planning committee uh, meeting. Happy to move. Okay, I have a mover. Um, uh, Councillor Williams and seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Those in favour? Okay, carried. Right, we'll move on to consideration of reports. Uh, and the first report is uh, 6.1, application for a planning permit D slash 877 slash 2016, 8 Ballantyne Street, um, Thornbury. And um, in relation to that application, um, we have um, some speakers. We have the applicant, um, David Bailey. Would you like to step forward, David? Okay. <coughs> David, I, I've just been advised, I'm a bit rusty at this. Uh, could you just go back and, and take a seat? Uh, we're going to get our, a report from our officers first that will just give us a summation in relation to what's, what's in here, and then I'll call you forward to give you a five minute presentation. So over to our officers. Um, 8 Valentine Street in Thornbury. This application seeks approval for the construction of six double-storey apartments plus a basement car park. Um, there is a mix of dwelling um, types of two and three bedroom dwellings. Um, two of the dwellings are three bedroom and four of the dwellings are two bedroom. Uh, the basement car park includes eight car parking spaces which, include, which includes the full complements of residents, however excludes any visitor car parking. Um, all dwellings include ground floor living and small courtyards as secluded private open space um, with additional supplementary open space provided in the form of a first floor balcony um, of 10 square metres. The subject site is currently located with the, within the general residential zone um, and has an area of 825 square metres. Uh, notice of the application has been provided um, and a total of six objections have been received. Um, the objections are summarised in the report on pages 9 to 11 of the officer's report. Um, in general, the application has been assessed as achieving a high level of compliance with the planning scheme, um, given the site's context being close, closely located to High Street and public transport. Um, minor ele elements of non-compliance um, are also address addressed in the details of the officer's report. Um, I will note that um, the garden area of the um, general residential zone is not applicable in this instance um, because um, the application seeks benefit of a transitional provision. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for that summary. Okay, um, next, David, please come forward again. And, um, and as I mentioned at the outset, um, you've got five minutes to make your presentation. 
Thank you, Chair and Councillors. Uh, this application and the develop, developing the design response is we took a close look at what was happening around the site and in particular, and you, you should see this on the plans, is that there are numerous similar developments existing. Uh, there is a unit development two doors down and uh, adjoining the site is an approval for an apartment development uh, which the last time I was down at Ballantyne Street hadn't commenced construction but was approved by the tribunal uh, and it has a, a similar building form to what we're proposing, a building envelope at least. That's more of an apartment development. Uh, ours is designed as a townhouse development. While all dwellings are sitting above a basement car park, they are separate and there's no dwelling above or below any other dwelling. Uh, now, the this, this site is close to the, the amenities and facilities which uh, the planning scheme um, sets out as encouraging high, high density of development, public transport in particular, and of course we're, we're only at 80 metres from the high street, uh, retail street. And all, all of those aspects have informed the design response. Uh, and resulted in the two the two story development we've also need we also need to look at where our sensitive interfaces are uh, and in this particular case we've got a, a carport along the rear boundary that belongs to an apartment block over the back fence uh, and we have a single story dwelling to the east with the backyard however against our boundary we have a driveway and a garage which provides a buffer. We've provided a three metre setback and then an additional setback to the first floor. On the western side, we've, we've really based our design on the approved development for that property uh, and their private open spaces are to the rear and the front rather than along the side. And that, that development has mainly either walls on boundaries or service yards uh, next to our development. Uh, we've, we've sought a high, uh, as uh, the uh, planning manager has noted, we've sought uh, a high degree of compliance with RES code, Clause 55. I think there's only one uh, numerical non-compliance, which is at the rear, first floor, and of course that rear wall faces the neighbour's carport, and we've considered that to be a, a non-sensitive interface through there. We've also designed those setbacks to allow for planting along the sides. Now there is a pergola element that runs right along that eastern side and that is to provide uh, an, an entry point or, a, or, a, or almost an external corridor that gives those entries uh, some, some character and a sense of identity. But we've also uh, engaged a landscape architect to review the plans and ensure that we can achieve some landscaping that's going to be of a reasonable height to provide some buffer and some softening of those views. As you'll see from the plans, we've proposed no walls on the boundary. The site coverage and the permeability easily meet the relevant res code standards. Uh, it appeared to me from the uh, council meeting agenda that the landscape plans hadn't made it into the, the plans attachment. And I, I have a copy of those here if, if you'd like those circulated. Uh, You've got 30 seconds to um, okay. in, come in to a conclusion. In addition to that, uh, I have some 3D models that were presented. Now the, the driveway has altered, but the, the, these models do give a good impression of the colours and materials and how the finishes will appear. So I have copies of those for circulation. And the last point is, obviously we're happy with the officer's recommendation. Condition 1.0 recommends the water tanks go underground 
We're using slimline tanks. They're very thin, and I have okay, some your, your time's up, a yeah. photos of those. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please take a seat back in the, in the gallery. <coughs> okay, councillors, um, have you had an opportunity to look at the documents that have been distributed? Yeah. Okay, are there any questions or clarifications? Um, Councillor Amir? I just had a, um, a question through you, Chair. Um, in regards to the, um, there was a reference made to the plans benefiting from the um, transition conditions of the general residential zone. Does that mean that the previous conditions are being applied or the new conditions are being applied? And which is more um, permissive? Okay. Can, we, can we get a response to, to that question, please, from our officers? Provisions means that um, because the planning application was lodged prior to the changes to the zones, mm -hmm. um, they only need to conform technically with the previous um, mm -hmm. rules, um, which I suppose you could call are a little bit more lenient than the current controls in terms of open space provision required. Okay. Any further questions, councillors? Councillor McCarthy. Uh, just, a, uh, just a point of clarification. Uh, there was no objector that we should wish to speak. Um, I couldn't. Uh, we don't have listed any objectors um, uh, for tonight, so that's why I've gone straight to question time. Thank you. Um, if I may, sorry, Chair. Um, we did actually hear from um, two of the objectors who were unable to make it. Um, the owner of Six Ballantyne is currently in Singapore, and the owner of Four Ballantyne is interstate. Um, they didn't want their non-appearance um, <laughs> to mean that they didn't, they weren't interested. <laughs> um, so. Any further questions or clarifications for councillors? If there aren't, um, councillors, there's a, there's a recommendation there before us, or is there any um, other motion that councillors want to put forward? I'm happy to move the motion as is. I'm happy to. Councillor Newton, you're happy yes. to move the happy recommendation move the that's in the report? Yes. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Seconded by councillor Newton. Councillor Newton, would you like to speak to the um, the motion that you're putting forward, that yeah. is the recommendation that's in the report. Yeah, just briefly, um, initially looking at it, I thought that six is quite a lot for the site, um, but knowing that there's an eight, um, an eight dwelling building going up nearby probably made me a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, and I think looking at it, as the applicant said, there's not really a lot of grounds of refusal here, so I'm happy to go ahead with it. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Mia? You um, don't have to stay, Councillor Mia. Oh, I know you're oh, taking oh, a cue from oh, Councillor Newton. No, you don't have to stay. Um, I mean, this is a street here that is dominated by single story um, detached houses. Um, so I do empathise with the people in this street um, that this is an area of change. Um, however, as was mentioned by the officer, it does have a very high level of compliance and it is an area that is changing rapidly and unfortunately for <laughs> some of the residents living in the street, um, the location so close to Thornbury Station, to the number 11 um, and number 86 trams um, and to the high street means that it is a good location for higher density housing. Okay, thank you Councillor. Any further speakers for or against? Um, I'll speak Briefly, um, You're speaking for or against? Yes, speaking for. Okay. Ordinarily, this is the type of development that I might have struggled to support, but I think there's a couple of things that I'd like to highlight which I think actually get this across the line. Um, one is that the dwellings themselves are quite nicely proportioned and I think mm -hmm. offer a really good standard of internal amenity. I'm looking particularly at the bedroom sizes and they're not, they're not sort of squeezing the boundaries mm -hmm. and minimum in any way. And I think that's important. So whilst they're fitting a lot on the site with six apartments, these places all have main bedrooms that are 12 or 13 square metres. They're not the nine square metres we've seen in far too many mm. developments. Um, I think in terms of the number of dwellings on the site, the, the saving grace for this development, as it were, is the fact that there is a carport over the back fence and a driveway to the east. And that driveway means that the overshadowing issue that I might be ordinarily concerned mm -hmm. about is actually impacting on a driveway and I think that um, given the approval for a larger building to, um, to the west, um, those things get this across the line where I wouldn't see this being appropriate on all blocks mm. of this size. Mm. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rennie. Any further speakers for or against? 
Look, if there's no further speakers, councillors, we have a, a, a resolution to support this application uh, with the attached conditions, the 18 conditions there. So those in favour of supporting the application? Okay, carried unanimously. Um, thank you, councillors. Okay, what that means um, for the benefit of the um, gallery is that the council has a um, with the stated conditions that are in the report and, um, and that objectors will have 21 days to lodge an appeal with VCAT and, um, and that the council will be notifying all the objectors of the decision that has been made here tonight. Thank you. We're going to move on to um, the next item, which is uh, 5.2. And let me get to it. Okay, this is an application to amend the planning permit V slash eight nine nine slash two thousand and fifteen A in relation to fifty nine Howard Street Reservoir. Could I please have a, a report from our officers? Thank you. Um, application has been made to amend an approved landscape plan by replacing more gravel on paving with concrete and realised beach dwelling. The application is for retrospective approval as the works have been carried out already. The site was the subject of a council notice to comply issued on the 8th of 2016 for a material de deviation from the endorsed plans. Uh, notice was given of this application by one sign on site and notices to join those as occupied. Six objections have been received. Uh, these objections have been summarised on page 23 and 24 and responded to on page 24. The proposed amendment does not maintain the garden setting of the surrounding area. The, the surrounding landscape character is generally semi-mature and informal, with large open spaces and um, spacious setbacks. The open space and setbacks within the site are generally large enough to provide sufficient landscaping, However, this amendment seeks to cover the area with concrete rather than utilised for landscaping. Um, the recommendation, therefore, is to refuse the application to amend the planning permit and to issue a notice of refusal. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, we have um, Mr. Nick Katsikis, who is the applicant. Um, would you like to step forward, um, please? Again, as, as previously, you have five minutes to make your presentation. Mr Nick Katsikis has asked me to speak on his behalf. It's Travis Finlayson from Ratio Consultants. He's, he's too emotional to talk. Uh, it's his mother's property at the rear and he, the sister lives at the front and the mother's elderly and he made these changes to the endorsed landscape plan to enable her to age in place and to move around eff effectively rather than having to put her into a nursing home. So he acknowledges he's done the wrong thing in terms of not complying with the endorsed landscape plan, but there was a reason behind it in terms of wanting his elderly mum to age in place rather than being put into a nursing home. So he's a bit emotional about it. One thing that certainly wasn't noted in the officer report is that the revised plan increases the number of approved trees six metres in height and above from four trees to 29 trees. It also meets the 20% permeability test. So whilst paving has been replaced with concrete in part, the number of trees proposed on the landscape plan is actually greater <coughs> than was endorsed. Most of these trees have also been planted at an advanced height. The replacement of paving with concrete within the backyard areas is due to the need to accommodate an elderly widow, ageing in place to enable her to move around. The permit holder has sought to work with council officers with various amendments to the landscape plan to address requests in relation to canopy tree numbers and achieving 20% pervious surface area. On the 19th of May, on completion of advertising, my client contacted the council officer who confirmed support for the modified landscape plan. No further communication was provided. It was not until the 30th of June that our client received a letter from Council indicating that the matter was to go to a Council meeting and would not be supported. Our client has informed me that he was not made aware of the change of officer position nor the receipt of objections. Our client has not been afforded the opportunity to respond to the changed officer position nor address the concerns of the objections. 
As a matter of due process, our client requests that the consideration of this matter is adjourned to enable further modifications to the plan to address the change of officer position and the objections. Because as of the 30th of June, our client was of the view that the matter would be supported. They are shocked that it is not. So we'd urge the councillors to adjourn this matter to enable our client to make amendments and has offered to do so throughout the process in order to address the matters raised by council officers. Okay, thank you very much for your, for your presentation. Thank you. Um, councillors, are there any questions or clarifications? Councillor McCarthy. Just, uh, I, I'm assuming that there's no objector to speak in relation no, to this. No, um, it, it, I would just ask the question, I mean, the, the trigger for this coming to us is because of the objections. Um, this would have been refused under delegation had it not been the case. Um, can we just have a, a response from the officers regarding the, the, um, the presentation by the applicant and the issues raised? Mm -hmm. Officers? Thank you, Madam Chair. We, I've got a couple of points to respond to there. Um, my understanding and advice from an officer who's dealt with this application said, advised that quite clearly um, a person was told about council not supporting the proposal. Um, that was early June. Now I think possibly one of the issues is that there's three people, <coughs> excuse me, that have been dealing, sorry, three people on behalf of the applicants that have been dealing and negotiating with this site. So um, I know one of them was, was definitely to be told that we will be um, not supporting the proposal. So that, um, that's a response to that one. Um, and the other matter just to point out is that um, since this application come, came to our attention through um, lodgement, it was a response to an enforcement where the applicant or the developer had constructed this site um, not in accordance with, <coughs> excuse me, with their endorse plans. That was back towards the end of last year. Since then, on a number of occasions, we have had discussions and situations where the applicant has been able to negotiate and talk with us through the process um, to try and come to a agreeable situation where the um, officers in council would be supportive of the proposal. It has been going backwards and forwards. Um, our concern about now this last minute stopping again and um, having another chance to redesign is it has been it has been able to redo that for the last seven months and it hasn't um, happened to date. Mm. So um, that's basically our responses to the, the comments made. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, look, I don't have a question. I'm, um, I feel compelled to move the, the recommendation oh. from the officers. Just before you do, Councillor Beer yeah, may, may have had I a have question. Two questions. Two questions. Um, one is, what will the process be for the applicant if this mm. application is refused? Um, and my second question relates to the um, objections. Uh, there are some objections from surrounding neighbours, one relating to um, a light shining onto adjoining property, another one about uh, damage to a fence or shed. Have those been addressed or what's the scope for them to be um, addressed Thank from here? Can we get a reply to those questions? We'll have two points. If this application was to be refused at um, committee tonight, then the applicant has um, the right to lodge an appeal with VCAP to um, um, ask VCAP to determine the matter um, after council's views have been um, identified. In respect to the light and drainage uh, damage to the fence, uh, they haven't been applied for or dealt with as part of this. It's been brought to our attention. Mm -hmm. um, what we have done is advised um, enforcement um, to um, talk to the applicant. Um, part of it will be a civil matter, certainly the damage to fence may be involved in a civil matter with construction. Mm -hmm. In respect to the light, um, we would look into that as to whether there's a condition on the original permit that says mm -hmm. any lighting not to cause detriment to the mm -hmm. neighbours, so we would look into negotiations mm -hmm. about um, following up with the applicant as to how that can be fixed if it is causing any detriment to the um, surrounding properties that can be followed up. Can I ask a question? question? Yes. Um, so in this <coughs> unusual situation where it's retrospective 
um, approval if we would if we re, um, refuse the appro approval here tonight the applicant goes to vcat and the decision is upheld will that require the applicant to revert the property back to its original form is that what will happen it's an obvious question yes yeah, it, it would be completely be up to the tribunal member and the tribunal member would sit there and weigh up whether <coughs> a small modification or oh, sorry a further modification to ripping up part of the concrete um, so that it allows um, enough uh, mobility of that um, mm -hmm. for the resident, or whether they in fact rip up it right back to the landscape plan that was originally endorsed. But that's mm -hmm. completely pretty much up to yeah. the that tribunal member as to which um, decision they go, which line of decision they go. Mm -hmm. and so maybe they get a free response before them, yeah. or to the other extremes go to what should have been uh, previously approved. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Uh, I, I just got one clarification, which leads off from the last question. If it's the event that the applicant does not um, take the matter to VCAT and it were to be refused by council, what would be the status there in relation to the, given that the, um, it's, you know, there's been a retrospective... Um, we would then, of course, would then follow up um, as to either making good, um, to construct it in accordance with the plans that were originally endorsed, or the applicant could um, put in a further modified plan um, that gets closer to the originally approved, um, and council can consider that as a fresh application. Okay, that's good. Any further clarifications or questions from councillors? Okay, councillors, uh, there is a recommendation there, uh, Councillor McCarthy. You're moving the recommendation to refuse the the um, the, the, the amendment. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Rennie? Councillor McCarthy, would you like to speak to it? Uh, look, while well, I, I sympathise with um, the, the presentation by the applicant's representative, I think we need to be really clear about where we are in process here because it's there are some cues as to how I think we need to deal with this which follow directly from the process. The re only reason that this application has made its way to the planning committee is because it has, um, it has exceeded five objections. Had it not exceeded five objections, it would have been refused under delegation because that is the advice of the officers. So it's actually that it's had a high number of objections that it's found its way here. Um, and the officer's recommendation, as we've heard, follows directly from an enforcement process which has triggered the requirement um, or the uh, objective for the applicant to seek a planning permit to gain retrospective approval. These are the sort of facts that we're dealing with here. Um, the onus was on the applicant to present a, uh, a satisfactory retrospective application, and I'm not a fan of retrospective applications, but there are some grounds upon which you can consider them. Um, despite what we've heard from the applicant's representative, and I, I empathise and sympathise, that the point here is that we, if we were to defer this, on what grounds could we defer it? Mm -hmm. um, we can't defer it to um, enable a fresh application. That is a separate process. Mm -hmm. um, we can't um, uh, string a process like this out for further amendments to um, the landscape plan because it is so far away from what officers have felt is satisfactory um, that uh, we can't proceed down that path. So we really aren't left with any choice but to proceed with the officer's recommendation and hope that through the work between the applicant and officers that, um, that a satisfactory outcome can be found. Um, I don't think anyone would want to end up at VCAT over this. It seems like an extraordinary waste of everyone's time and money. Um, so I'm hoping that some common sense will prevail, but unfortunately the deferral option put forward by the applicant I don't think from procedurally can be justified um, <coughs> given, given the options that are realistically before us at the moment. So on that basis I feel no, um, that we're compelled to actually move ahead with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor McCoy. The second, would the second like to speak? Um, very briefly, I think it is incumbent upon developers to construct whatever it is they're building, whether it's a building or the landscape, in accordance with endorsed plans. And if we open the door for people to get plans for something and then build something different, then where will it end? It's hard enough getting quality developments to begin with without having people modify them once they have approved plans. I think that's a basic principle here and I think we should stick to it because there was a landscape plan. That's what Council gave a permit for, not what's been built. Mm -hmm. And the responsibility 
I'm afraid, is with the developer, whatever the circumstances, to build according to those plans. Okay, thank you, Councillor Rennie. <coughs> Okay, Councillor, we have a, a motion of refusal for the, um, to amend the approved um, landscape plan. So those in favour of the refusal? Okay, carried unanimously. Okay, for the benefit of the, um, the gallery, the applicant, the, the council has refused the um, application to amend the landscape plan. Um, as mentioned previously by our officer, the applicant has 60 days to lodge an appeal with MECAT. Um, all the, uh, the six objectors will be notified of the decision that's been made by the uh, planning committee tonight. Thank you. Okay, councillors, we'll move on to the, the next item, which is uh, 5.3, application for a planning permit, D-884-2016, in regards to 140 Regent Street, Preston. Could we get a report from our officers? I um, go through this um, report is that since the report was um, finalised and gone into production, uh, an appeal against a failure has been lodged by the applicant. So that rather than the recommendation be that it must be that, that the development be supported and the planning application notice of decision issued, we have to if, if you would follow those. The lines it would be forming an opinion mm -hmm. to support the proposal as opposed to making a decision to it. Mm -hmm. um, the application we received uh, is to build a four story building, opposite ground floor level, 12 dwellings over three levels above that, and 12 car spaces provided at um, <coughs> the access from the rear of the right of way. Five open spaces in the form of balconies. Uh, notice was given, two signs on site, and notice is sent for joining owners and occupiers. Thirteen objections have been received. <clears throat> These objections have been summarised on pages 36 and 37, and responded to um, on pages 37 through 42. <clears throat> um, the subject site was um, subject to a previous application to construct a four-storey building that was very similar in nature to the proposal that we have before us here. VCAT um, actually refused that original um, proposal. It basically gave four reasons, sorry, it came to four conclusions in respect to that original application, which is very similar to the current one. Uh, VCAT determined that the overall development was held to be an appropriate built form. Uh, VCAT um, advised that no re unreasonable off-site amenity impacts were provided by that original proposal. The proposed development provided an appropriate level of housing diversity and internal amenity was also um, identified by VCAT. The substantive issue that VCAT held for refusing the original proposal was that insufficient parking was provided in fact for office use. Um, the original application was for 12, dwelling, 12 dwellings and an office area and provided only a total of eight cars. This current proposal before us is for office and 12 dwellings again, but this time there's um, 12 car spaces, um, eight for the dwellings and four new car spaces for the offices. Um, the subject application maintains the residential car spaces and allows additional floor spaces for the officers. Therefore, the recommendation of the office, officer is to form the opinion to support the application of the VCAT hearing. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, look, from my list here, I don't have any, any speakers for, for this item. Are there any speakers there in the people that want to present? In, anyone in the gallery that? No? Okay. If that's the case, um, I'll just hand it over to councillors to ask questions. Councillor uh, McCullough. Look, I just first of all just had a, a question about um, the, the comment by, by our officer regarding the fact that this is now going to VCAT. Um, can we get an indication as to how many days over it actually is? If that's uh, available to us at the moment, I apologise for that. <laughs>
briefly looking through the file, it looks like whilst the application was submitted back in October last year, there was a request to amend it in February this year. So the clock starts again at that stage, so that's February. We're not advertising it April. So it looks like it's over 60 days. Well, If it's significantly over, that's yes, that's so all I was wanting to get an idea of. Thank you. So it is over. It's, yes, it's, it's well and truly it's a bit too much. Mm. It's okay. Over. Yes. So the clock hasn't stopped in relation to any documents, that's right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's over. Okay. Yeah. Mm. okay. Thank you. Any further questions, Councillor Reddy? No, I had a motion if no one has further questions. <coughs> Any further questions, councillors? No? So, councillor, uh, yeah? Um, thank you. I have a, a motion which would be a refusal to grant a permit. Um, I did, this was circulated earlier. Um, it would be that we issue a notice of refusal to grant a planning permit comprising the following grounds. One, the proposal does not meet the objectives of clause 2202 of the Darabin Planning Scheme, in particular 2206. 3.4 relating to dwelling diversity. The development does not provide a sufficient range of dwelling size and type, including a lack of three bedroom dwellings. Two, the extent of studio beds to apartment dwellings is inappropriate with an excessive number of dwellings having reduced amenity to living areas and bedrooms. Three, the type of accommodation proposed by the development is not suited to the out of centre location of the subject site. The subject site is not located in a first order activity centre or proximate to a transport corridor or tertiary institutions. Four, the type of accommodation proposed is not consistent with current or projected community needs in this location and contrary to housing objectives in clause 21014 of the Darwin Planning Scheme. And finally, the development constitutes an overdevelopment of the site, taking into account the number of dwellings proposed within a limited site area. I just have to ask you to reword the, the, the initial part of that uh, motion that it's a, it had councillors forming an opinion. Thank you, um, councillors, for the opinion, the not, not to support the planning application. Yep. Thank okay. you. Um, okay. so they, um, any, is there a second to that motion? Yes, I'm happy to Councillor second it. Mm. Councillor Reed, would you like to speak to the motion that you've just put forward? Um, certainly. I don't believe that this development in this location is supportable or even close to being supportable. It is a very large building on a very tiny block of land proposing inferior standard of accommodation that might be suitable were it located on a university campus for students where there is all of the other amenities that a university campus offers, for example. But um, what we can see here is one bed, one room dwellings, not one bedroom dwellings, one room dwellings, where the beds look as though they're almost on the kitchen table. So I, I think that in and of itself is not satisfactory, particularly when it's a building full of those type of um, dwellings and I would urge the developer to go back to the table and look at putting in you know three or four nice apartments um, on this site which would be far more appropriate to the location. Councillor Newton would you like to speak? Yes just really seconding what Councillor Rennie has said I think I know this location quite well and I agree that it's not the right place for it. We can see that there is room for beds but there's really very little sitting area. We're looking at 42.9 square metres for some of these apartments and I think that we should refuse it on those grounds. Thank you, Councillor. Any further speakers in the late? Councillor McCarthy. Uh, look, I, I looked at this um, and wondered whether we might have accidentally received an application um, that should be presented to the City of Yarra or the City of Melbourne. It seems like it's in the wrong place. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of a bed sit development if it's appropriately located and provides the sort of amenity that we can expect. And in a younger life, I looked at something just like this um, in Nicholson Street, Carlton, uh, sorry, Fitzroy, um, and, uh, and I remember thinking, um, it'd be very hard to, to send, uh, once, once you have kids, send them into the, uh, their room because there is no other room. <laughs> um, so I suppose the problem we have here is that, that we have an application um, which um, officers for, obviously for ResCode reasons have um, indicated 
fit some criteria, but the significant point that Councillor Rennie has made is that this is about context as well, mm. and it doesn't fit the context. Mm. Um, there are uh, locations in Darabin where you could see something like this, mm. but not at this location. Um, and of course there are some, some other smaller failings as well which we need to be aware of. So um, <coughs> I'm willing to, to support the refusal on that basis, and I think Councillor Rennie's suggestion of a better design um, and a better use of the space might be well worth thinking about too. Thank you, Councillor Bacca. Any further speakers? If there's no further speakers, Councillor, I'll put the, um, the motion that has been read out by Councillor Rennie. I won't ask her to read it out again. I think it was fairly clear uh, to everyone. So um, I'll put that motion of re refusal um, that we don't support this um, at, at, the, at the VCAT hearing. Those in favour? Okay, carries unanimously. Uh, councillors, uh, um, so what we've done there is that we've um, re uh, rejected that application and that um, not really rejected what we're expressing <coughs> the view um, before VCAT that we will not support the application once that um, VCAT hears that, that particular uh, application. Okay, thank you councillors. We're moving on to our last item, 5.4. It's an application for a planning permit. D slash four five nine slash two thousand and sixteen with regards to thirty two to forty station street in Fairfield. Again, could I have the officers to give us a, a synopsis of the application? Thank you, Chair and Councillors. Um, this application is certainly a unique application um, and uh, proposes the development of a four story building um, with fifty nine dwellings. Um, the application seeks to resite or relocate a heritage building um, identified and protected under the heritage overlay um, and reuse it uh, on, an, on the other site adjacent to the property um, with a 100 place childcare centre. I will note um, as well that the site is somewhat complex um, with regard to the zones. Um, 40 Station Street is currently zoned RGZ3. 32 to 38 Station Street is currently zoned RGZ4, and 36 Station Street is the site that has the heritage overlay HO79. The sites are also um, covered by DDO, Design and Development Overlay Schedule 20, DDO 20. Um, if councillors turn to pages 81 to 84 of the officer's report, there is a detailed explanation um, of why council has made um, this decision, council officers have made this decision um, and how it proposes to deal with the heritage property in relocating it from one site to another. Uh, the 59 dwellings are made up of 41 two bedroom dwellings and 18 single bedroom dwellings. 70 car parking spaces are provided in the form of two basements. Um, and vehicle access is provided via Station Street. Uh, the site is, large, is a large strategic site con um, containing 3,226 square metres um, and 81 metres um, of that is frontage to Station Street. Notice of the application has been provided and a total of 21 objections have been received. Uh, the summary of these objections um, and responses um, are provided on council reports at pages 74 to 80. Uh, the application has been assessed against the provisions of the planning scheme and although complicated by the heritage issue, um, it is still considered supportable in accordance with the DDO 20, Design and Development Overlay Schedule 20, um, and the requirements of the residential growth zone. Uh, the application is recommended for support um, or notice of decision subject to conditions. Th thank you for that. Um, next, I'll invite the, uh, Mr Connor uh, to come forward. The, speaking on behalf of the applicant. Uh, again, you, you have five minutes to, um, to make your presentation. Uh, th Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Vaughan Connor, and I'm a director at Contour Consultants, and we act on behalf of the permit applicant. Um, the application before council tonight proposes a four-storey residential um, apartment building comprising 59 units, relocation and retention of a heritage building, and its use as a childcare centre. A basement car park is also proposed, and a total of 70 spaces are provided. 
The report on tonight's agenda recommends the grant of a planning permit. We obviously support the recommendation, it is a, and it's a recommendation which has been born out of extensive work with council officers to resolve a number of issues and to ensure general compliance with the applicable planning scheme provisions. As lodged, this application sought to vary some of the discretionary provisions in the planning scheme, and Mr Rudd and his um, officers made it quite clear <coughs> if we were to achieve council officers' support and we would have a chance of council laws supporting it, it needed to comply. It needed to treat these discretionary provisions like mandatory provisions. Our client elected to work with the council and has achieved the outcome which is before you tonight, i.e. a recommendation to support this application. I don't intend to repeat the content of the officer's report, however, I think it's necessary and appropriate that I provide a summary of the key planning considerations Firstly, as we've heard, this is a relatively large site. It's 3,200 square metres or thereabouts, and it's identified in Council's MSS as being in an area of substantial change. And this makes good planning sense. The site is proximate to, obviously, the Station um, Street Activity Centre and also um, heavy rail transport, public transport. Consistent with the local policy provisions which relate to that, um, the substantial change area, the site is zoned residential growth. I accept it's, um, it's covered by two different schedules to the residential growth zone, however the whole of the site is within the residential growth zone and the residential growth zone in its purpose contemplates four storey development. In addition to the residential growth zone provisions, the site is subject to a four-storey building height provision through a design and development overlay. I won't say any more about that other than it's a mandatory provision, we have to comply with it. And then, if, and then the design and development overlay also contemplates situations where substantial change areas interface with, interface with existing housing stock. It includes provisions applicable to such situations, and this relates to setbacks, and um, as the building gets higher, the setbacks need, need to be greater. And it's as acknowledged in the officer's report, the actual setback provisions within the DDO are far more onerous than the Clause 55 or the RESCO provisions. Over and above the, the zone and design and development overlay provisions, the site is partly affected by a heritage overlay. And in response to the heritage overlay considerations, expert advice was sought from an experienced heritage consultant and the response is an innovative one where the proposal seeks to relocate and retain the existing building. Not only does it retain and relocate the building, but it puts the building to a community use, being a childcare centre. A hundred space childcare centre in an area where there is significant demand for extra childcare places. There's also retention of existing trees and new landscaping opportunities um, proposed throughout the site in order to ensure, uh, ensure that this proposal contributes positively to the landscape character of this area. Internal amenity is appropriate. There is a mix of dwelling types and sizes. There is a mixture of single bedroom units, some with studies, some without studies. There is a mixture of two bedroom units, some with two, bed, two bathrooms, some with single bathroom. I just heard some commentary then in relation to the last item about there being a lack of three bedroom dwellings. Mm -hmm. What's typically occurring throughout the planning industry given the demand or the increasing demand for, for larger household types in apartment developments, there is a requirement for developments to be able to demonstrate how three bedroom accommodation could be accommodated if there is a demand for it and we'd certainly accept a condition which requires that. In summary, these are important considerations. We also note that the application is supported by Vic Roads, an independent external heritage consultant, Council's urban design advisor, Council's traffic engineers and Council's ESD officer. And um, well, your time's up. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Councillors, um, are there any questions or clarifications to our officers? And um, I note on page 82 of the report, um, it states that the Borough Charter, a document that guides conservation actions in Australia, discourages the relocation of buildings except as a matter of last resort. Um, could I get some more information, I guess, about uh, 
the strength or status of the Charter and perhaps um, the officers' um, ideas around whether this is a last resort in this context. Uh, officers, could you shed some light on the, the question that's been put by Councillor Mia? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so the Borough Charter is certainly a guide. Um, and it is something that we've used as part of the assessment and the heritage advisors would have used as part of their assessments. Okay. Um, we are comfortable with the conditions that have been placed on the application that the, the dwelling will be relocated satisfactorily. Mm -hmm. um, if it is to be relocated um, in accordance with the requirements, the studies required, um, with the peer reviews required, um, it has been done before and council, is satis council officers are satisfied. Um, that this application, that the, through this application, <coughs> we will be able to retain um, the heritage dwelling. Okay. Look, before I proceed with other you know, questions, uh, Mr. Grant, can I ask you to take a seat uh, back yes, in the sorry, gallery? I thought, um, that question was going to be directed yeah. to me, but no, thank you very much. Um, and uh, and before we take other questions, I'm sure there will be many more. Uh, look, we have three objectors here tonight. Could the three people that want to um, speak? Uh, one, two, just two of you. It, you have five minutes in total. Unless you agree, one could take the lead and take up the whole five minutes, or, or you could split it 50-50. It's up to you guys. Okay, you, you want to split it? Or? So? No, 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 no. You, you, you only have five minutes in total. I'll do the point in front of what I was going to say. Okay, so you're, you're the only speaker then? No, no, no I'm going to do two and a half each. I'm okay, going so to take two, mine in half. I'll give you two and a half minutes then. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Uh, the recommendation before you from Council Officers regarding the Heritage House means that residents uh, cannot rely on written advice and verbal assurances from officers representing council. In recent years, senior council staff have advised in writing that council would protect the heritage listed house for 36 Station Street. The advice in March last year, for example, <coughs> stated, quote, with regard to the property and the heritage overlay and its supporting information, this leads Council to support a position to retain this building and opposes moves to demolish the building or unduly compromise the integrity of its immediate garden setting. That's pretty clear. And I also quote, we remain confident that the heritage overlay highlights the significance of the former doctor's residence and clinic and delivers a clear signal to be retained on this site. Also quote, it is the heritage overlay that it is in place that addresses your concerns and largely determines the fate of the building on it. Now we have a history of similar clear statements from Council going right back to 2012, including an error in the rezoning C147. Based on this clear and unambiguous advice from Council, we've decided not to move from our home of 32 years, which backs onto this unique piece of Fairfield's history, and we've also relocated an elderly family member to a unit across the road from us. Nevertheless, the application before you seeks to demolish the Heritage House, which was the first house in the C.H. James development of the Fairfield Park Estate in 1887. The proposal to copy the front portion of the house only on a different block at the front of the block right on Station Street is totally unacceptable and doesn't comply with either its heritage status or council's undertaking to residents. Residents are entitled to and should be able to rely on written advice from council officers upon which residents make major life decisions. Now, I was going to go into all the details objecting to the specifics, but I'll leave that to my Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for keeping that brief. Uh, our next speaker. Uh, Apart from the heritage issue. So before you start, so uh, you, you're the only speaker now, or? Yeah, we have to keep it within within five minutes to, to be fair. So the more uh, okay. the more you speak, the less you can speak. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that's a good one at a time. Yeah. 
Thank you. I'm very quick. Uh, right. I'll give you guys two and a half minutes. Yeah? Okay, good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm Susie. I'm located on 42 Station Street. It's a very busy medical clinic. We have been operating for 17 years. And I, uh, I'm very concerned about the shared driveway because the shared driveway must be, must be clear at all times to allow the patients uh, to actually uh, escape if there's a fire or emergency. And also, the, it's also the, where the ambulance enter and exit the, 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 the premise. And also, there mustn't be any interrupt, interruption in the water supply to the clinic during construction. I'm also concerned about the service truck entering the driveway, accessing the garbage bins, because I don't think the service truck can actually reverse and come hit Head, front, head first into station, to station street, and I do not think they could turn into my car park. There would be vehicles <coughs> parked along the, that area. So the only way for the service truck to do is to go straight in and reverse out. And also concerned about the second story with the balcony, which is hanging over my over my, my, my fence. So uh, I think that, that there's actually a, a lim, uh, could actually it's a visual bulk disaster and also it's invades into my patient's uh, privacy and also should I uh, desire to uh, build a second story over my, over my clinic the buildings will be too close together almost touching wall to wall and also I'm just wondering, wanting to know where the heritage house is going to be relocated to okay. I'll just add in the last minute that most of the site is RGZ4 and the site coverage of 73% exceeds the IGZ for coverage provision of 60%, so the proposal does not provide um, sufficient open space. And the proposal has 10 apartments of 45 square metres, 48 square metres, and that doesn't provide adequate amenity, and banks are reluctant to land on less than 50 square metres, and it's, so I'm asking, is this inferior accommodation what council really wants for the future of Darabin? Again, the proposal seeks a reduction in the number of required parking spaces. We've had a 394% increase in the number of dwellings on our block, and this part of Fairfield cannot accommodate any more developments which do not provide the required number of parking spaces on the site. Okay, your time is almost. Thank look, th look, thank you very much for that tag team presentation. <laughs> if you could take a seat back in the gallery. Your name was Alistair? Yes. Yeah, Alistair Glosier? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks Alistair. Okay, councillors, uh, any questions or clarifications? We've already had some questions. Uh, any further questions from councillors? Um, Look, if there's no further yeah, questions... Yeah, Councillor um, Mia? I was wondering through you, Chair, if um, the officers could respond to the comment made um, just by the most recent objector about the provision of open space and compliance. <coughs> okay, can we get a, a, a response to that? Uh, so there was a uh, assertion made that the development was not compliant with the open space provisions given the um, complexity of the zoning and uh, overlay. Oh, permeability, site coverage. Site coverage. Site coverage, site coverage. Site coverage. sorry. Yeah. Um, look, council officers have made an ass assessment on balance. Um, we've already acknowledged that the um, planning policy, so the, the zones are somewhat complex in terms of a number of zones, uh, schedules to the zones, I guess, that which apply. And on balance, council has decided, uh, council officers um, would put forward to you that um, the application achieves a good balance of um, higher density development um, mm -hmm. and uh, an amenity, um, um, amenity, I guess it reduces amenity impacts as much as it possibly mm -hmm. can on adjoining properties. Mm -hmm. um, so. For these, these kinds of applications are certainly very difficult for council to make decisions on mm -hmm. um, based on the fact that within RGZs often there are existing dwellings um, which uh, I guess can't expect as much amenity as um, you would in the resi uh, general residential zone or the neighbourhood mm -hmm. residential zone. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Um, there was also a um, comment made by one of the objectors around um, the, I guess, current site of 40 Station Street and the proximity to the uh, Darwin Endoscopy next door, 42 Station Street. How does the uh, 
I suppose the site coverage or the boundary of the current building at 40 Station Street compared to the proposed new building? Can we get some details on that from our officers? So sorry, you would, sorry, Chair, you were um, wanting to understand what's what setbacks are there at the moment, the space that's there, compared so to the, what now is The distance yeah. from the, um, the current dwelling to the boundary yeah. compared to the proposed dwelling and the boundary on the side of the road that adjoins 42 Station yeah. Street. <clears throat> The, my understanding is the current um, building that sits at 40, mm -hmm. I think is what you're looking at, Station Street, um, does appear to have a large open rear yard. Okay. Um, compared to 42, which is a narrow building that has fairly small setbacks to its what looks like the common boundary. So in actual fact, 40 is a... Um, a house that takes up probably just under half of the okay. depth of the site and then a large, <coughs> excuse me, open space backyard. Yeah. <coughs> so the proposal is quite different yeah. um, to what currently exists. Thanks. Okay. Is that okay with you, Kasanya? Any further questions or clarifications? No. I have a motion. Do you have a If there's no further questions, um, Councillor Reddy, your motion is? The motion is that we refuse the planning permit for 32 to 40 Station Street Fairfield and the grounds of refusal are as follows. The, proposal, the proposed front setbacks from the east boundary are non-compliant with the residential, general residential zone GRZ3 and GRZ4 and presents undue visual bulk and mass to the street and is contrary to the preferred character of the street. The proposed side setbacks from the north boundary are non-compliant with the general residential zone GRZ3 4 and to GRZ, sorry, GRZ3 and GRZ4 and present undue visual bulk and mass to the street and is contrary to the preferred character of the street. The proposal rear setbacks are non-compliant with the DDO 20 and present unreasonable mass and bulk impacts upon properties to the west having regard to the mass and bulk of the development through the site. Side setbacks from the north boundary being non-compliant with the general residential zone GRZ3. The relocation of the heritage building is detrimental to the heritage character of the site and contrary to the objectives of the heritage overlay. Solar access, internal amenity and sustainability of the design is inappropriate. The proposed site coverage is non-compliant with the general residential zone GRZ4, provides insufficient landscaping opportunities, results in mass and bulk impacts upon its surrounds and is detrimental to the character of the area. The location of bins in the front setback of the heritage building is detrimental to the heritage character of the site and the character of the street. Overlooking has not been adequately addressed and the proposal will result in overlooking impacts to the west. Overshadowing of the secluded private open space at 35 Gilly Street is non-compliant with clause 55 and will be detrimental to the future residents of these dwellings and it is an overdevelopment of the site. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine McCarthy, you're prepared to second that. Catherine, would you like to speak to your motion? Um, yes, I think it is really important that when we have a heritage overlay, we treat that with the respect that it deserves and that our community expects. If heritage could be fixed by simply lifting up and moving things, then we could flatten the whole suburbs and just lift and move a few buildings. That's not what we want. We want our heritage buildings in place where they were. The location of them is part of the heritage. Moving them and modifying them goes against all that that stands for. And so I think that's firstly, you know, the biggest problem with this issue is it makes a mockery of the concept of heritage. Um, secondly, I think this proposal is simply too ambitious and there could be further proposals for the sites on either side of the heritage building, both of which would allow for developments that actually increased um, the dwelling density, um, notably to the north of the heritage building. There's still a big block that developers could build something on, and I would encourage them to come back to us with a proposal for that site, and, and for that matter, for the site to the south. 
there are numerous areas of non-compliance. So not only do we propose to move a heritage building, but the, the building itself is non-compliant in a number of areas which we can see from the compliance table. Even if we were inclined to indulge the development in the, in, in the movement of a heritage building, you would expect that that would only occur in the most exceptional of circumstances where everything was done to perfection. The number of areas of non-compliance I think is really concerning when we're being asked to entertain the idea of moving a heritage dwelling. And I think that all of that just adds up to the fact that um, this doesn't treat the, the neighbourhood and the character of that neighbourhood with respect. Um, it's not what the community wants and expects from us as a council. And I think that a development could be achieved in this location that's far more respectful of the site and of the heritage of the neighbourhood. Um, I, I might just add that I find it rather incongruous that you would s seek to locate a childcare centre in a development that's got um, accommodation of one and two bedroom. Th that I think, you know, the idea of locating a childcare with residential mm. development is, is very fine indeed. One would expect that in that case you might see residential development that was suited for families, which would truly mean that you were adding, or, or that a developer was adding some value. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Councillor McCarthy has a second there. Would you like to... Oh, I think Councillor further? Rennie has, has covered it um, magnificently and um, I would just echo the sentiment that the heritage is not just about the physical building, it's about the context. And uh, I, I find myself, having previously found um, the views of Bryce Rayworth on some heritage matters challenging because he is not necessarily... Um, hardline heritage. He's actually quite moderate in his, his, his views on these sorts of things. Um, and yet he's made the case quite simply that um, it is something that you would do in ex extreme and unusual circumstances. And I don't think that the development proposal that we have before us justifies such a great diversion from the heritage um, uh, that is in place. And it is inconvenient um, for the applicant to have uh, that older building there. Um, but as Councillor Rennie has pointed out, there are many other ways to increased density on and around this site without um, actually touching the building as it stands. So on that basis, I'm happy to second the other uh, refusal. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Sorry, just before you vote, um, yeah. can I just seek clarification on Councillor Rennie's um, grounds for refusal? I think she said G GRZ, um, General Residential Zone, but in fact it's the Residential Growth Zone, RGZ. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sorry, sure. Sorry, I think the G's and the R's are around the wrong, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll make sure that's... So could you read out that section where the change has been placed so that for all of us we could be clear? Um, the proposed front setbacks from the east boundary are non-compliant with the RGZ um, and presents undue visual bulk. Is that...? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Are there any further speakers for or against? Okay. Uh, I'll put the motion, the, the 10 grounds of refusal that's been put forward by Councillor Rennie. Those in favour of the refusal? Those against? Okay, um, it's carried. Um, for the benefit of the gallery, um, the council has refused that application. Um, the applicant will have 60 days to appeal to, to VCAT and that all objectors will be um, notified of the decision made here by the council tonight. Okay, thank you, Councillor. That, that concludes our reports, councillors. Uh, we've got one more item left, which is um, 6.1 other business. Councillors? <coughs> Happy to move the re recommendation. Councillor McCarthy moves. Councillor Mia seconds. Councillor McCarthy? No, nothing. Councillor Mia, no? Nothing I'll put that recommendation that um, those in favour of the motion. Okay, thank you, Councillors. That concludes our business, and thank you, officers, and thank you, members of the gallery. Thanks. Oh.